150. You can pick one that you'd like. Pretty cozy in here now, aren't we? <laughs> I'm Rob Johansson, and my wife Jan Gorenson and I own and operate Gorenson Farm. And maple syrup is the first crop that we harvest. And we go out to the maple trees with these strings in our pockets, and you can see there's uh, some little black marks on this string. What we're going to do is we're going to measure that maple tree and see if it's big enough in order to put a bucket on it. And so a tree has to be at least 12 inches in diameter, four feet off the ground before we can tap it. All right. And that tree is probably 40 years old at this point. Right? At the same time, we also look up into the crown. We see, how's that tree looking? Is it, did it lose a big limb in a windstorm? In 98, the ice storm in 98, we lost about 40% of our taps because of the damage that was done to the tops of the maple trees. So we had to back off and let those trees regrow, in which they will do. And so, because they're a pretty tough tree. And so, well, let's see, that tree is gonna grow and grow. And then there's going to be, there's an 18-inch tree. Now I can hang two buckets on that. And then a 24-inch tree. Now we can hang three buckets on that if it's healthy. Who would like to be a maple tree? She'll be a maple tree. All right, let's see, what, let's see if we can hang a bucket on this tree. Well, just barely. I got to know, though, is this a sweet maple? or I don't want to tap any. Pretty sweet. Okay, all right, so. After all, this is a renewable resource, and I'm merely a steward of these trees at this point in time. I don't own them. They don't belong to me. And it's one of my jobs as a sugar maker is to make sure these trees are around for all these young people that, that come along every year and, and see what we're doing. They may just grow up and want to be a sugar maker like I have been for the past almost 40 years. So, yikes, that's hard to contemplate. <laughs> anyway, any rate, so... We're gonna figure out how many buckets we can put on it. We're gonna drill a small 7 16 inch hole, about two and a half inches deep. We're gonna tap this little metal spile or spout into that hole. And of course, it's got a hook on it, hang the bucket, put the lid on it, keeps most of the bark and the snow out. But where we've got trees on a bit of a slope, we're gonna use this maple sap tubing. And we like the tubing because it keeps the sap quite a bit cleaner than, than does the, uh, the open top bucket. So, and I, after all, what my grandmother always told me was, cleanliness is next to syrupness. Isn't that what your grandmother told you? Ooh, ooh, that's bad, that's bad. At any rate, this blue thing on the end of the tubing is the plastic equivalent to that metal spile. This is a harness that's made up for a tree that's at least 18 inches in diameter and healthy, right? So we're going to put one tap on one side, one on the other, because you've got to remember as the season progresses, the whole circumference of that tree will actually run sap sooner or later. The south side always runs first, but we, so that's why we don't concentrate all our taps on the south side, because we want the season to continue. So anyway, so this is part of the T is hooked to more tubing, goes to the next tree, where it picks up whatever taps are on that tree and eventually ends up at a barrel by the side of the road. So let's see, where am I? We drilled the holes, we've got the tubing up. Hmm, does that sap run out of the tree at that point? Once I drill that hole? No, it certainly doesn't. No, it takes special weather conditions for that to happen. And that, those weather conditions are nice cold nights in the low 20s and nice warm sunny days in the mid 40s. That makes the sap run, and it, and it runs because you get this pressure differential between the inside and the outside of the tree. When it's frozen in the morning and then the sun beats on the tree, it actually causes a higher pressure on the inside, and that makes the sap flow out of the hole that we've drilled in it. So we have about 24 to 36 hours to process that sap and turn it into syrup, or it can spoil. So what you're looking at here is a fancy kettle. Now maple syrup boils at 219 degrees Fahrenheit or seven degrees above the boiling point of water. 
When you boil maple sap, you get a precipitate. You can see how cloudy that syrup is. And there's actually a little bit of layer of that sugar sand. It's actually a form of calcium. It's a malate of lime for any of you chemists out there. We're gonna pump that hot syrup through this filter paper. And then the syrup is gonna come out looking like that. So it takes all that sugar sand and bark and bugs. Oop, did I say bugs? No, no bugs in my syrup. Anyway, so there we go. We got the right amount of sugar in it. We got the sugar sand out of it. It's ready to go on your pancakes, right? Right. But can I sell it to you? Oh, I can't sell it to you because the main maple labeling law says, Rob, you got to give people a rough idea how much maple flavor is in each one of those jugs and bottles. And we do that by utilizing this United States Department of Agriculture maple syrup grading kit. There, I got it out one more time. Because <laughs> the color and the flavor of maple syrup is a function of how long I boil the sap. In the beginning of the season, the sap sugar content is the highest, so I don't have to boil it as long to bring it up to that legal amount of sugar described in the law. So that's when we get our light flavored and light colored syrups in the beginning of the season, the light ambers and the medium ambers. As the season progresses, the sap sugar content naturally falls off. I have to boil it longer. It develops more color and also develops more flavor. So that's when we get our dark ambers. And at the very end of the season, we make a few gallons of extra dark amber table grade A knock your socks off maple syrup. So now we've got the right amount of sugar in it. We got the sugar sand out of it. We got a grade label on it. Now can I sell it to you? Yes! Yeehaw! So we're going to put it in our canner, bring it back up to 185, 190, hot pack it, put our name on it, and then we can sell it to you. But thank you all for coming, and we'll see ya!